So I'd actually managed to get this Bentley running. It wasn't running that great. It was still missing on a few cylinders. And it was still throwing a couple check engine codes. Then it shut off on me. And then I realized that the fuel pump had actually burned up. While removing the fuel pump, I discovered that there had been sugar that actually blew out of the lines into the tank. So after cleaning the tank once again and reinstalling the fuel pumps, it was time for me to start this thing up and see if it would run any better. So after cleaning the tank and reinstalling the pumps, it was actually running a little bit better, but it was still throwing check engine codes. So I decided to pull the spark plugs and check them out. They all look pretty good, so I cleaned them up and put them back in. But even after all that, it still was missing on a few cylinders. I figured that I still had some bad gas in the tank and just needed to drive the car. Also, I got this thing loaded up with chemicals here. Got some of this heat. That's supposed to be good for removing water from your gasoline. Works pretty good. We got this sea foam. A lot of people already know what that is. That works pretty good for cleaning out your injectors and stuff like that. I got some of this Tektron here. I've heard good reviews about it, so I decided to buy it and try it out. You only use a little bit of it at a time. So I've got all three of these in there. So between all three of these, we should be getting that gas right where it needs to be. By the way, this is not a paid endorsement by any means. This is just some of the stuff that I use around my shop. And by shop, what I mean is this lovely section of gravel driveway. Well, I do have a garage, but as you can see, I keep my Corvette in here. So I do a lot of my work out in the driveway. So I've been driving this thing around and it's actually running a whole lot better. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the fuel filter off. And I'm going to blow some air through it and see if we can get any more trash out of it. Last couple times I've took the line undone. There wasn't that much bad gas to come out of there. But I'm just going to do this as a precaution. Now these cars have an air suspension on them. So before you can jack up the vehicle, you have to make sure your key's on. And you got to come over here to the center console. And you got to take these two buttons right here. And you got to push them in and hold them. You should put it in jacking mode and it should come up on the dash. You see that little yellow light? That means it's in jacking mode. Now you can safely jack up the car without causing any damage to the suspension. So this is my setup, just a blower nozzle with a piece of tubing on it. Going to hook it to the filter. Now this is low pressure. This is only about 20 PSI. So here's the gasoline that I got out of the filter. Now as you can see it does look pretty good and it does still have a little bit of something there. I'm not sure if that's water or if that's fuel treatment. I do have some fuel treatment in there. You see that right there? That is actually a little bit of sugar. So that means our filter is doing its job. Bad thing is that does mean that there's still some in the tank. Not a big deal but that's not a whole lot compared to what was coming out of there.
So I'll probably do that for the next couple hundred miles, take it undone, see if there's any bad gas coming out of there. Uh, it, it's a lot better to do it that way than to me to just keep throwing filters on it constantly. Well, I've been driving this thing around. It was still hesitating on me, still throwing check engine lights, still acting up. So I probably unloosened the fuel filter maybe six or seven different times trying to get some of that old gas out of there. It seems to actually be doing a little bit better now. So we'll continue to drive this thing around and get some of that fuel through it. She's running a lot smoother. We still do have a check engine light. We'll have to scan that and see what it is. Probably something real simple. Might be a misfire code from earlier. But it seems to be running and driving actually pretty good. So now that this thing's running better, we need to take it over to the rich neighborhood and see if they'll actually wave at us. So it actually seems to be running pretty well now, but we do still have that check engine light on. So what I'm gonna need to do is hook up my scan tool and read the codes. So it looks like we have a P0014, which is a camshaft position fault. So after driving this thing around a little bit, I noticed there was a little bit of top end noise on a cold startup. So I added some sea foam to the oil to help try to clear that up. And it seemed to help out a little bit. So after seeing the scan tool and seeing we had a camshaft adjuster fault, that right there tells me that we might have some bad oil in there. My experience with these engines with variable valve timing, something as simple as bad oil can cause the whole system to malfunction. You'll throw check engine lights, you'll have performance issues, and in my case, you can even have it to where it'll shut off on you. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I think I'm going to go ahead and get all this old oil out and get some fresh brand new oil in. So another problem that I noticed was right here on the end of the dipstick tube. This little grommet here was broke. It was actually causing a little bit of a vacuum leak. You could hear it while it was running. That's not really good. We need to go ahead and replace that so we don't have any more problems. So here we have an OEM oil filter. And as you can see, it does say Volkswagen on it. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bentley brand, Bentley is actually owned by the Volkswagen Auto Group. So later on, I'll talk a little bit about some of these parts I've been buying. Most of them is from Volkswagen and from the Audi dealership. They are the same parts that you get from the Bentley dealership but at the Volkswagen and Audi price. So it's also important that you use the correct type of oil. This car requires 0W40 Mobile One synthetic. With it being a turbo car, that makes a lot of sense. This oil is not cheap. The cheapest place you can find it is usually Walmart. It's around $26, $27. This car requires 13 quarts. So we're talking three bottles. That's $75, $80 right there with tax. I was lucky enough to get these bottles for $20 plus tax each. Walmart, hands down, is the cheapest place to buy oil. It's usually way cheaper than some of the big box auto parts stores. So that's where I always buy my oil from. So of course the first step is to remove this giant splash shield from underneath the car. Now yes it is damaged and I'll talk about that in a later video. But for now we have it off, now we can move on to the next step.
Here's the old filter and the old oil that I took out. And it don't look too terrible. I don't see any kind of contaminants or anything in it. No metal shavings. Uh, it just looks dirty. No telling last time it's been changed. But you'll have a fresh oil change in it now. Now as you can see this thing has a canister style oil filter. And here's the brand new element inside the housing. It's always a good idea to change the crush washer when you change the oil. On this particular car, the washer is actually made onto the bolt. So here's a brand new bolt with a brand new washer on it. Now I also believe that this piece being broke was actually causing an inaccurate reading on the dipstick. This should solve that problem also. Make sure you check out my other videos on this Bentley. Like, share, and comment below. Also, make sure you click on that subscribe button. Click the bell. And if you're not already, make sure you're following me on Facebook and Instagram.